All right, welcome to the SES meeting. Um, our topics today are, are there questions about module fragments followed by a realms update? Uh, Daniel, take it away. So about module fragments, we had an incubator call about this topic. Um, and uh, maybe we should have a, a further call because not, not everybody from this room who expressed interest was able to make it to that one. But uh, we discussed the, the idea that, that's been previously discussed in this call about having, moving from a model of module fragments identified with strings that would be, you know, URL fragments. They would instead be with lexically scoped variables, which would be special if declared that would be available uh, a bit earlier, you know, with static semantics around them, identifying which they are. So this would be a correspondence between this subset of lexically scoped variables and the, the, the variables that are lexically scoped and available at runtime. Uh, Dan, so it, Dan, is, are, are there slides that you could usefully present or something with code in it that you could usefully present while you're talking this through? Uh, so it's issue number five on the, uh, the repository and there are notes taken from the, from the incubator call. Uh, given the, the time sensitivity of the realms topic, I'd rather not give a self-contained presentation of this today. Yeah, I don't, I don't have great slides written up. And I want to suggest that we, that we shift more discussion of this to a future SES call. Okay. Or, or a future call that's dedicated to this particular topic. It can be a future SES call, seems appropriate. Okay. Uh, I sense a denouement. Uh, would we uh, pass the floor to Leo about the realms update? Okay. Um, yeah. So we have. Uh, I've been um, uh, tailoring uh, the slides for what I want to uh, present for this TC39 meeting about realms to, in order to advance it to stage three. Also in contact with the Chrome team and uh, with other teams that are involved and uh, all the stakeholders. Oh. So, uh, we've got some interesting uh, pushback from W3C tag and uh, about the realms proposal. And we've got some, uh, um, <clears throat> We've got some remaining challenges that we want to have fixed, and uh, we believe these challenges would be um, what we need to discuss before advancing uh, to, in order to advance realms to stage three. Um, I've, I am working in some slides, and I'm going to give these illustration. Um, actually, share my screen. Um, yeah, so I'm skipping my slides to uh, <laughs> that I this, these are slides that I'm going to present to TC39. I, I, I want to um, to uh, reduce uh, these these slides into uh, more actionable things. Uh, this is a little bit extended, but I'm also skipping the slides to slide number uh, 10 because uh, one to nine are more reintroduction of what realms are about. I think we, uh, we, can, we can skip that for this group. Um, so these are the current challenges that we believe that we need to have a uh, working path uh, to have successful stage three. And I'm gonna be talking about this module map or graph separation, the web globals to be set during host and uh, what it means for these uh, HTML integration. It is uh, in some strong pushback requesting uh, the, still the previous Realm API, the pre-callable boundary design. Um, I don't know what during host means. Um, uh, we have a host, uh, host hook uh, to uh, add web globals. I'm gonna go there. I think it's very important that we discuss module map and graph separation right now. Okay. This is one of the most challenging uh, yeah, but, that then, but that that bullet point, yeah, it's confusing. So just use the name of the abstract operation yes. that, that in question. 
Yes, uh, yes. I'm just trying to be to fast forward to today's actual problem. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, for any case, th these slides are uh, just drafts of what we're going to, of, of what I'm going to have at TC39. This is like just content that I'm throwing in and cleaning this out. Um, so uh, the Chrome team through Shu is uh, saying there is a constraint for this module graph map separation uh, that we should not be int uh, introducing a disjoint module map because in the web specs and implementations, these are literal uh, copy and paste. Module maps are tied to window or worker global sc uh, scopes and they are associated memory caches uh, and HTTP caches, et cetera. Um, and uh, therefore, SHU is uh, through the, the, the repo in the initial trial is proposing to extend the module map to have a separate instantiation of the same module source against the, uh, the matching realms global. But that means reusing the same module map that we have in the page uh, realm, but having separate instantiation of each module for each realm. What does this mean outside the browser? Uh, uh, I have a pretty clear understanding of what this is. So similar to how they added a two-tiered cache system for import assertions, it looks like they want to do the same thing except on the realm level. So adding another tier or component key to the lookup. And then when it doesn't exist, you instantiate a new one. Um, so basically within your module map, you're going to have a unique location for any given thing. It's going to be pointing to some kind of source. Um, and then it's up to you to point it that location properly using your hooks. Um, so uh, in direction of a kind. And then when you have that location point to by your loading hook, um, it instantiated it instantiates it off the same host underlying backing storage of that source. So for Node, for, uh, to be a more concrete example, we read files off disk. Let's say we had a set of two realms. You have a backing storage of a not fully populated file yet. It's still reading, maybe it's big. They both point at that storage, and it is up to that storage completion um, to provide the source text for both load operations. A single single storage location supplies the um, data to create each module, even though there are two different modules in two different realms. Yeah, that, that, that sounds that sounds okay. Can you go back one slide, uh, Leo? So one thing I will suggest here is that we make sure that we highlight here that this is for the web integration. Um, because it, it was always the goal that uh, a, a, a module instance is internated uh, 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 close over the, the global object of the realm was always the intent. It was never uh, different from that. It's just that when it comes to the web, they have all these different complexity that has to be solved. Um, and so that, that's one, one suggestion, like highlight that this is a problem that does not concern TC39 at all. Uh, it will not be in the spec by any means, so it's just going to be the implementation of, of, of this for the web. Uh, so everyone is, is tuning into that. And then the, the fact that he's proposing this solution uh, that introduced all the kind of problems, uh, it's fine. We can, we can look at those problems, but it seems fine to me that um, this is now different from what we were proposing initially. I don't remember what Daniel did in the integration, uh, but I don't suspect that it's very different from this. I see. Yeah, yeah so I, I could speak to that a little bit. Uh, I, I, I is, is Brad, 
Sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. So as, as Bradley was saying, uh, Dominic, I guess, is proposing that it be from the same fetch, whereas with uh, in, when, you, when you import the same module in multiple realms, whereas for import assertions, Dominic specifically insisted that the HTML assertion can use multiple fetches. Uh, I have quite a hard time understanding the, the motivation for this. And I think in practice, there's no observable difference. I say in practice because in theory, uh, these multiple fetches could occur. But in practice, browsers will probably cache the, the results in their internal in-memory HTTP cache and not make a second request, uh, even if they, even in the import assertions case. That is so consistent with the interpretation of assertions as assertions and not content negotiation. Uh, right, assertions are not content negotiation, and I remain baffled by the insistence on the semantics that HTML ultimately adopted. I do think it makes sense to, uh, and, and basically the reason I'm okay with them is because it's not going to come up in practice. The difference here is also not going to come up in practice. Um, the, the changes are according to Dominic, not just editorial because they theoretically change the number of fetches in some cases. Uh, so um, in, in, I think it mostly amounts to sort of a transposed representation where instead of having it be that you have the module map hanging off the realm, which is simpler, you have this more complex representation of this, uh, you know, weak, weak key in the module map, which is of the realm. I, and we, we could do that, but nobody's done this editorial work yet. And I, uh, I don't think it should be considered a stage three blocker, but they may decide that it's a stage three blocker to do this kind of editorial work. How does any uh, of this affect the content of the TC39 realm proposal? Which it cannot, does not. It does not. Okay. And that's why I wanted to be clear in the slide that it's, it's not about T39. And, and also maybe adding to this slide, uh, who is defining the constraint and uh, who is proposing the solution, in this case, Chrome team through SHU. So we should have it there. So it's not, we're not introducing a constraint at the champion group. It's just saying, this is what they are saying. And we, we, we can al align with that, with this constraint, that's fine. Uh, we can figure out something, but it's not really on us to define that constraint. Yeah. So, and, also, and, the and constraint, the shul in the constraint seems sounds weird, but that's, that's just semantic. I would like to to pause the discussion because uh, through these slides, I, I I want to illustrate what are the things that we want for this TC39 uh, proposal. I might find a better illustration of that, but I. And yes, this is uh, everything that is uh, being said here is correct, but I have some illustrations here of what we actually need from the TC39 side, and we can definitely shape this like all the remaining parts that we want in the web integration and uh, further. But we need to set our, our own constraints or what we want in this realms proposal from TC39. The, the next uh, slide is, um, Basically, one of the things that I want to work uh, this way, regardless of like using uh, the same module map for fetching uh, the code or doing a parse syntax, the instantiation is very important that is done uh, per realm for me because for. But, but, but Leo, yeah. again, uh, similar to the conversation that we have yesterday, it was always that way. Like we, we, sh we should not even get into the conversation about. That, 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 that something different from this. We it have was always supposed to be for no. the realm. No, uh, it was. No, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have a, a concern that relates to this. In the next slides, I'm going to show the code that brings a problem here. This code here today is working fine, but we have an illustration going next that is actually the next constraint over this. Because first, we had one constraint that works for us. That totally works for us, but we have the side uh, we have the side channel problem that I that creates a problem that I trying to uh, to res have resolved for us. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I right, but but okay, go ahead, go ahead, keep going to the next one. Okay, um, yeah. So this is the actual proposal status quo. Like each realm has its own global scope, uh, which is being a constant. 
uh, each realm should have its own individual module map. Uh, this is what it's saying today and reflects the multiple module graph uh, map already exposed in an iframes. Um, I just wrote some examples in, in, in iframes showing um, the iframes do have like separate global. We cannot observe like um, utilization of evaluated modules in iframes like for, for another brown. Um, for what this proposed separation means, yes, we still use a single module map because the network and parse syntax cache of this map is going to be uh, reused from the parent realms. Child realms can read from it, and it extends the module map uh, to create separate instantiations of the module source from the respective uh, for that respective realm that is import importing the module. Okay, but I just need to interrupt the clarifying, and, uh, question, clarifying question. Uh, Everywhere it says module or module map in this set of bullets, uh, all of those are web integration only issues. None of them are TC39 issues. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, but uh, do, do, you, do you finish, Mark? Yes. So, Leo, like, yeah, I think we're, we're going to get in trouble with this. Every time that we are comparing this thing to iframes, we get in trouble. I can just remove the problem with iframes. We, I can, uh, I even not trying to to go deep in the iframes problem. I'm just saying like I'm using this iframes context, saying like this is already reality of the web. The iframes, uh, like even if we say something is tied to, this is a re reality of the web today. We already have the different module map with iframes. It's not something that if we like. So by, uh, that part's fine. Can you go to the next one? Yeah, because we have security concerns. Like if we expose this through realms, this will be a security problem. What is a security problem if iframes are doing that today? So this one, um, I I have no knowledge that this is in fact codified in the spec. Maybe it is. It else. is not codified. Nobody has written this up yet. This yeah. is a proposed and separation. As this slide is saying, I, I might be. Is it proposed for the TC39 proposal or the HTML integration? This is uh, what Shu wants to be resolved, and what Shu uh, in representing the Chrome team is requesting to be resolved before stage three. Okay, so this is Shu's proposal. It, yes. Yes. I, I understand, but would this constraint be specified in the host hook on the TC39 proposal, or would they just be on the HTML integration? Um, I don't wondering... think TC39 can exercise governance of that. Uh, of that, most of it would be just notes in the uh, host dynamic uh, module import hook. Right, but should there be uh, a constraint specified there, saying that, for example, the host has to allow uh, loading a module uh, identifier that has not otherwise been loaded in the incubator realm. Um, so you don't need to frame it that way uh, because that would still be allowed with this constraint. Uh, the thing is they would <laughs> share a backing store is the concern. So um, this is the don't... actual, I think this actually connects to the next concern. Like we have a race concern from Dominic. That's a big wall of text saying uh, Dominic doesn't want to allow the chi uh, any child realm to mutate the parents' realm's module, ma uh, module map or graph. Um, that means in order to uh, import any module from a child realm, a instantiated realm, this module needs to be first imported by the page realm. I think um, this concern is quite absurd and in bad faith. Yes. It, you know, uh, first Dominic yes. insists that they use the same module map and then insists that it not edit the module right. map. So first of yeah, all, the first constraint was really I, an editorial <laughs> constraint. And the second constraint is just, you know, if, if the child realm can do network fetches, these things will be cached in a common network cache. Nobody's proposing cache partitioning between the two realms 
uh, mechanisms for, for fetching the contents of the modules. So the whole timing attack concern, um, no matter what we decide at any of these levels, it will be possible to see the, these timing issues. So I'm, I, think, I think when we're giving this presentation, we should, um, we Shoo. should maybe be a little more direct about constraints that don't make sense. I, right. I know it makes no sense, but let me tell you one thing. Shu and the Chrome team wants this discussion to be resolved. My goal is for to come to stage three, uh, to the TC39 meetings requesting for stage three with this discussion resolved in a path that we provide, like a, what, that we suggest. And we need to consider this, even if it looks like uh, something well, that we don't believe. Well, I, I have a different opinion. Technically I, a pro problem. I, I don't think this is smoke. I think there's, there's value on, on this proposition. Um, uh, we always thought about this as a different layer of control at the compartment level where you can control what can be loaded, what cannot be loaded, how it be loaded and yada, yada. So we always thought about this as a layering issue rather than providing the level of control at the realm level and just do it at the compartment level where you can do all, all sort of virtualization on the module graph. Um, so it was never, it was never intended to be in the realm, but this, this idea of controlling what do you load has always been in, in the back of our heads in terms of compartments and other things. And Mark probably can assert that. Um, so this is not new for me. Um, I, I, I see two ways of pushing back on this. One way is it should belong to a different layer. You might want to do that um, at a different level. Maybe we can use very similar thing to what we do with assertions where you can say import assertions will have a, a list of things that can be loaded or can, I don't know, uh, thinking about oh, yeah. but or it could be a, a API that allow you visualizing the, the module graph and, and, and so on. So pushing back on this does not belong to the realm. The realm is just for the global. We focus on the global and the intrinsics. It's a new set of globals, new set of intrinsics, a new module map. And whatever happens from there, it had to happen at a different level. That's one pushback. Uh, so I, then I don't, think, I don't think this line of argument will be very effective because you're saying uh, we have these other goals. We really want those other goals to happen. They will require this other stuff to happen. And Dominic is saying, yeah, you have these other goals. This proposal doesn't achieve them. So, you know, what are we doing? And that's um, a valid argument. And I think the only way through is to say, actually, we don't need that other stuff to happen. Actually, we can control this without compartments just by having it be that the, that the parent realm only loads a certain set of modules in the child realm. And, there, you know, other, otherwise, is this actually what we want to be shipping on the web? Uh, that that would be the question. So I so, think uh, if I, you know, this the, the, this feels like an effort where it's like saying because you've articulated these broader goals, uh, you can't have this simpler version. It seems like that's the purpose of raising this particular concern. If I um, if I can continue the slides, I I, I have uh, I'm trying not to to uh, strategize this as like being smoke or not. I'm just like, I'm taking this in consideration. Like the Chrome teams wants this to be considered and uh, I'm con given like proper consideration of this. Um, and I have next slides to show uh, some side effects of this and some proposed uh, solutions. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, because while well, you mentioned what Daniel mentioned that this is uh, a thing that's not real, that's not useful, yada, yada. We, we wanted to make sure that we uh, agree that this is a thing that we have looked at in the past. And it's it, something that we well, would like to have control in the future. Uh, yeah, I, I'm quite skeptical of that form of argument because the resolution that you're proposing is that we actually ignore this problem, is that we no, actually no, don't- No, no, Daniel, don't, Daniel don't no, I, I, forget, about, forget about my, my proposed argument. Um, I just wanted to make sure that we are all in the same page that this is a, a this is not a, 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 a smoke. This is, this is a real thing that we wanted to solve at some point. 
So it's a, there is a valid concern from, from Chrome. Not because it's, they're making the argument, it's because we believe that this is something that we want in the future. Carity, there, there's, there, I don't think there's any dispute about this group and the efforts that have been put forth on, on, on trying to make uh, secure and isolated and uh, <laughs> environments through a variety of means. Oh. What were, what you, you're the argument that you were making, and I know you said throw out the argument, it doesn't matter, I just want to acknowledge that that's something that we do want, but we can do in user land library code, which is the thing you and I came to complete agreement on yesterday. Yeah. But there's, there's one little sticking point, which is that you're, I agree with you, but you're credit, but it's, but you predicated that on, you know, have a different module map in the realm, which hold on a second. I totally agree with you. I'm not one of the folks that thinks that like a uh, disjoint module map is a problem. I honestly think that the realms, every child realm should have its own module map full stop. I don't know why that's a problem, but that being one of shoes requirements makes it completely at odds with Dominic's requirement. That's why that I get, yeah, that I get, yeah. this claim because, is nonsense. Yeah, That's why we're saying it, this is not a real thing because you can't have both of those things. Um, well, you can absolutely do what Dominic wants to do um, if, if we can have disjoint module graphs, you know? But anyway, I just want to say, like, I agree with you, but we need to make sure that we call out that specific detail when when bringing our argument to table they can't just have both of those things or else we get a useless realms become useless after that um yeah i, we, I agree with i agree with, with rick so I, it's, I it's quite important to... how we how we frame this you know we've we've made these advances about talking about isolation rather than security and that was really important to to getting this acceptable and uh this is another one of those things and so if you if you talk about how you want this thing later but you don't mention how you believe you can already completely achieve it in user space that's going to you know that that second part is a part that most people will not have the context of without you saying Bradley. sure so we got very heated and it became an echo chamber for a bit um just let's take a step back. I don't understand what they mean mutation of the parents module map since it's the same module map. What what are they arguing shouldn't be done? Well, I think it's the, the, the side channel problem that we discussed in the past that if the main window, the main host has already loaded that, you might time that and understand that they have it. Um, it's not only that, it could be other problems like a, some sort of timing issue because the, the ROM is loading a module now, the pattern might get some weird behavior there because it's expecting some timing to be different or something like that. But it, it all boils down to um, who populates the, the, the source cache. Yeah. Right. I I don't even think that's my question. I mean, like, what are they opposed to occurring? Because in both cases, you mutate the parent's module map because it's the same module map. What is the right, exact Bradley? You you just you just you actually just hit exactly on. This is another one of those uh, concerns that they have that is at odds with another concern that they have. Right? They, they're saying we don't want it to mutate. We don't want a child to mutate the parent. They're also saying uh, we don't want to have separate module graphs. It's like, but, but like what they're what that leaves us with is that a parent needs to know every module that the child might ever possibly uh, want want to load and preload it for them to allow the child so that there's no so that there's a, the shared module uh, graph doesn't doesn't get tainted or whatever because so, or that's what like the restriction that, is even in that case even if you do all that you still mutate the module map and yes it's still, so i don't understand exactly well, Bradley, uh, you, uh, you how do us. you mutate how do you mutate the module map 
broadly? Because you have to create a globally referenceable instance in these global module maps on yep. the web. Um, so yep. you actually have to create basically a component key based upon the absolute URL, the assertions in place, and the realm, if it's a single module map. Doing so, if you're preventing mutation of the module map, it doesn't make sense because when you instantiate a new module in a realm, it has a new realm ID, so it also gets inserted into that module map regardless. So yeah, in I, I agree what, that this is quite case, absurd. It doesn't, so, uh, I, I think I wanna, there might just be a lack of terminology here. They're yeah, talking yeah. past themselves. They're just too caught up in their uh, scare. I guess. Yeah, I think you, your argument is, is a good one. You're saying the module map also has instances on it. So you create an instance, you're making the mutation somehow, whether it's observable or not by the other realm is different. I so think it's more about the it observability aspect. If we it. really want to get into it, um, it's just hard to observe. Um, let's, uh, let's pause the discussion yeah. and let Leo continue with the presentation. Yeah, I, I, I have one, one question I'd like to insert. It seems to me that the, the overall shape of this discussion is um, there's a controversy about web integration, let's just say between positions A, B, and C, it doesn't matter what those positions are. None of the choices would affect the contents of the TC39 spec. Um, TC39, does not have jurisdiction on deciding a web integration controversy between A, B, and C. And the web folk are insisting that TC39 resolve the controversy that's not in our jurisdiction in order to advance a proposal that would not be affected by the outcome of the controversy. But Mark, let's, let's, let, let's let Leo continue the presentation because they're, they're yes, they're insisting on that. Let's, okay. let's just continue. Most of what everyone is saying is true. And most of it, I've been having like so many interactions with Shu uh, and with other people. Like I, the idea of what I've wrote these slides were to actually bring a better dynamic of this discussion. I agree with most of everything that is being said here. Uh, and. Uh, I just wanted to show the examples of this. I feel like now my slides are just like coming back a lot of steps and we are not, we, are, we don't have a good dynamic that I plan to. But uh, still, this example, this is the same of what I've had before, but with the dominant constraint, um, this one would, would actually fail because this page realm is not important, uh, the module file. And this would, like this side effect is something that I, I think it's a big compromise for me. Like this is not my, uh, this is my main, uh, my page realm failing because I'm trying to import a module inside the realm, but this uh, import is being rejected because by only the fact that module was not uh, imported. Um, we have some solutions. We have some. Uh, we have some uh, things that were proposed, and uh, but one of the things that uh, the that were proposed here, as like Shu brought in this idea, as like we could actually one of the things that we try. I have five options. I have five alternatives and I want to minimize them. Like uh, uh, one of the things that I want to make sure here in the assess meeting that we have less options to present to the C39. Uh, one of them is having an enumeration. So when we have a, a, child, uh, a realm instance, uh, we should be enumerating all the modules uh, that we want to load in them. If we go through this uh, module map thing, uh, the child uh, realms are still allowed to declare and load module blocks. That's one, something that I set in as a, like a compromise from Shu, and Shu is okay with that because I say like, hey, we have module blocks. If we if we have a realm that declare a module block and wants to load them, uh, there is no way for the page realm 
to actually uh, acknowledge that module block and enumerate that. And uh, that that is a weird side effect that I don't want to have. And Shu is saying like, yeah, if we enumerate all the modules before loading them, we can still make like a, a allowance to declare and load uh, module blocks inside of Realm. Uh, the option B. Yeah, option uh, A is not an option for me. Yeah, that, that's good. That's not an option because that's one of the things that Shu said and I, I said I needed to investigate with the team. Um, which uh, we are doing right now. And yeah, I know it's not an optional, that's good to know. Uh, option B, a single opt-in. This is something that Dominic is proposing. Uh, so he wants the no mutation, but he would be okay if the realm construction, uh, constructor would have a, a like new realm and a give uh, an argument with an opt-in, like with an object saying like a low mutation of the module map. Uh, true with the value two. Um, I, I, I think that's weak because I um, see like a massive <laughs> use case of realms uh, just going for this opt-in and like, hey, use this opt-in if you're using realms because it makes no sense to have this sort of problem in your code if you're gonna import modules. Um, option C, uh, is basically a graceful non caching module map, module loading. This is weird, this is weak, but it's actually like if the child realms tries to find a, a page module map, uh, a, a, a cached, a cached for network and syntax, if they were not there, they still fetch, uh, fetch parse and makes everything work, but does not cache anything. By that, does not mutate the, the page module map. Uh, this is one of the options that is a bit weird. It just says like you load a module, but you're gonna need to have a new network and parse all the time that you reload that same module. It's, uh, I don't think it's like amazing and it might have problems with network, but it's one of the things that I've been thinking here is like in a way to not cache. My favorite option of all of them is this one, option D doesn't provide an opt-in, but it, uh, mutation is still enabled because uh, I still don't want that side effect that I showed you. If child realm is tied to uh, just, a low, uh, just a low the mutation because if they're still tired in a way that, yes, I'm still loading a module from the same heap. Uh, and as Daniel has mentioned, we still have ways to simulate, uh, uh, to simulate like a network, uh, when the module is eventually loaded by the parent realm. Uh, and this can still rely as implementation defined, host can still simulate network and delay uh, for important mod porting modules in, parent, uh, in the parent and the child realm. Cached network and syntax are not necessarily observable, especially from TC39 side. Um, I, uh, so talking through this with Jordan, just to make sure like he's also like in the loop of this, Jordan support, uh, Jordan also suggested having the option D uh, extended with this thing. This is just like having uh, option E means the same thing that I said on option D, but actually adding an option to the constructor to disallow um, mutation. So the any incubator realm can say this realm can only uh, load modules uh, if I allow them to. Like do, do, do not allow realm, uh, the child realm to load uh, modules uh, that I that are not in my in the module map. Does not allow mutation. Um, it feels like I think option D and E are pretty like reasonable for what we want. Uh, for TC39 side, uh, it doesn't mean much for me if we use the same module map or not, but this mutation needs to be defined. Um, yeah, and it seems like Matthew has a variation of option uh, D as well. There are some other side effects. This is one of them, like a positional problem where I have just a, a single change of lines. Uh, in the first box, I have uh, my actual uh, 
program a loading, uh, importing the module first in the page realm and then in the chat realm. That doesn't create a problem. That doesn't create an error. But then uh, in the second box, I just change the position of the lines and then I have a type error. This is, for me, this is like a big compromise that I don't want to in my code. Um, and uh, we also have race conditions. Uh, if I just have these two uh, promises here, I might have, uh, I might have my, my code like being dependent of what the host does first. Like if the host, like I cannot tell here in the promises by the time they look uh, if the net network is going to be cached, if the syntax is going to be parsed. Right, but and this this issue, this issue, Leo, is is if 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 you if you don't allow mutation of the of the map, and none of the options are for that. This the is options, for the options are for solving this problem. Well. The option is that like proposing option D saying like, we are not accepting Dominic's concern of disallowing mutation. We are actually saying we, we actually want to allow mutation because the trade-off is something that we uh, that I don't want to commit to. Um, so like Dominic's concern saying uh, like, we should not allow mutation of the module map. And I'm saying uh, mutation is still needs to be enabled. And uh, with the option E is actually providing an option uh, that uh, an opt in to give what Dominic wants is that like this is low mutation. Because I think these sort of problems need to be uh, well specified by, by user as well. Like, hey, I want to have this race condition here. And so I want to have, because if I want to have no mutation, if I want to block mutation, I need to be aware this race condition might happen because this promise all here might work or just might, or might not work. If I disallow mutation, this might be an error. This might not be an error. You can run 10 times. You might have like five times working, five times not working. You might have ten times working by by luck. Yeah, I think that's the, that that's the, that's the, the the argument that we should make. Like the failing uh, at any given time is not really an option because it, it makes this problem to be a real problem for developers. Yeah, I think we should have that up front when they pro when when the proposed uh, solution is described um, from Dominic. We, could, we, we should jump into this one directly, say that seems like a, a pretty bad thing to happen. That's why we are exploring other options that do not include failing, because if he fails, then we, we have um, this kind of problem. Yeah, uh, yeah. The idea was to present the options here to this discussion. Uh, but I'm actually presenting the slides after the discussion. Uh, and uh, the idea was to present uh, the, the options here for, as I say at the beginning, I want to uh, reduce these options into things that we like in the paths that we want to go. I wanted to consult uh, with this group, like if option A, because that's Shu's uh, suggestion, like, can we go with the enumeration? I want to give a Shu saying like, no, I consulted with the SES team saying like, this is not a possibility because I, I didn't know. Like, can we actually commit to that? I'm, and yeah, you already gave me the answer. That's why I'm doing I mean, this. My, it's my opinion that enumeration is going to be a lot more difficult because yeah. you have the issue with the blocks. It's basically what happened with CSP, that they keep adding things to CSP in order to allow new things. What about blobs? What about um, other, other forms of modules? That you allow that, um, so it's kind of you, you need to expand that configuration to have a lot more flexibility for the web that do not apply to other environments. So having yes. enumeration seems like a pretty bad thing for TC39 because if you have enumeration, it means that it's API. It means that goes into into TC39 uh, for for the definition of that configuration. Um, yeah. So for, for those reasons, I, I believe option, option A is not really an option. Uh, another thing that my recommendation is that 
don't come to the committee with multiple options, expecting the committee to decide. Come to the committee with the option and the or the consider options uh, in case you want to go into the details of that. Yes. Because if you come with options, it will be just yeah. Chicho, I, like everyone. I, I, just... Yes. And uh, let, let me tell you one thing again. Yeah, the idea is this, it's, it's to come to the TC39 with, uh, with the option. Although Shu and Dominic suggest me option A and B, uh, and I want to give them uh, to say then no, but we have informed decision that is actually like what, the feedback that you're providing me. Yeah, I, similar I to what we're doing the RFCs. You say, this is a proposal from the yeah. champion group. These are the alternative that were considered and why each of them were not sufficient uh, or were not good enough. And this is what we're proposing. And then we go into the discussion. Yeah, I'm not even showing like why this is not good enough, but if they ask, I have uh, like information about it. I'm gonna try to go directly to what we want and why we want that instead of trying to say like, well, we, we actually don't want option A and B. We are saying like, hey, this causes uh, problems as, as I have illustration of the problems here. And uh, enumeration is also hard by this and that. And I'm gonna uh, have information about that when they ask about it, like why you don't, uh, why you're not pushing for enumeration and I have information about it. Yeah, and also yeah, option I E, I think option E is more likely to be also related to um, the other problem or the other discussion around um, uh, access to the other module uh, object graph. Um, it might be that we also have an option in the future to allow access to the other global object. Um, could, could be that as an option that we decide, um, basically not wrapping the, the, the callables anymore, just giving you access, direct access to the thing. Because there's a camp of people asking for that, another camp yes. asking for not, uh, intertwine object graph, different use cases care or not care about that particular topic. Um, so it might be that this tweaking configuration options that we might introduce in the future, allow you to lock down the realm or open that up to even be more flexible in terms of communication with the host. Yeah. This also reflects some of the pushback that we are having about the, the uh, access and uh, like we are getting a feedback from the W3C tag reveal saying like, why we are just not giving access if access uh, cross realms already exist today. And we have a strong feedback about this in the W3C tag. Um, I will not consider that strong, but it's a pushback. It, okay. And it's a pushback and also uh, people from this reveal, they are intending to attend the TC39 meeting. Uh, uh, for this realm's discussion and because of this very reason. Uh, but time is oh man, we, we have up in the Pandora box. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it's it's ironic because uh, from my point of view, from my perspective, people ask like W3C tag reveal and it, it feels some way uh, people want a tag reveal to actually say this uh, cross realm object access uh, to say that to tag to say this access object access would be a bad thing, but it turned out to be the opposite. And then now they want it because they actually have use cases like uh, two of the reviewers, uh, three of the reviewers, they have use uh, separate use cases where they want to have object access from Realm and they don't feel like Realm's uh, powerful enough with the callable boundary because it doesn't work for their use cases. So this is this is why the, this question about the, um, the other meetings with the Chrome team is so crucial because I think you know, we all here agree that Realms actually should have direct object access and that the callable boundary was something that we did in order to accommodate demands from Chrome team that we consider unreasonable. Uh, if Chrome team is no longer demanding that, then I think we should go back to direct object access. Yes, yes, yes. 
A lot of a lot of the shape of this argument looks like they're attempting to set up a proof by contradiction where we do the exploration or Leo where your group does the exploration to figure out where the absurdity lies and that it, it feels like they're trying to prove uh, trying to exercise to, to create effort that produces the effect that we realize of our own accord that realms are not feasible. Um, the uh, um, I didn't quite get that. Uh, is the, the, they've established premises that lead uh, uh, that lead to the conclusion that you cannot have both of the things that are both des uh, that are desirable in order for the realms to be feasible. Um, with it, and I would I, I I think that it's a, va a valid rhetorical strategy, but it and, and I agree that it could be interpreted as a bad, bad faith argument. Um, but I, I also what 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 Daniel was saying about leading with your conclusion um, is really important there because if, if 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 the argument is a conclusion sandwich, then it isn't in bad faith. If you if you lead with we think that realms are infeasible because it is impossible to create realms that satisfy both of our requirements. Um, then, no. Uh, no. In any case, uh, a, a lot of like option option A in particular, I think, is obviously absurd um, from a user experience perspective. Uh, that, that's all I've got to say. Let's uh, next. <laughs> Yeah, on that one, the, yeah, the fact that you are importing one module and that module can change to import other modules just make it absurd because you 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 have to accommodate the numeration um, uh, every time that a dependency of, of view changes. So you have to do build-time compilation of those things. So when you do roll yes. ups and when you do things like that, you just don't have a way to really define what are the things that you're allowing to import? This, that makes it uh, not, not really um, uh, feasible. Yeah, it, it, that also reduces to the absurd. As you say, it's that the point of a module system is to be flexible against changes to your transitive dependencies and, and to not have that flexibility is equivalent to having a build step that reduces your entire transitive working set to yeah. a single file and just yeah. compiling it. Yep. Uh, it's well after 11. Uh, I have another meeting. Thank you. Well, TC39 is next week. Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, wow. So I, I really did want to talk about this side channel concern with Mark before the meeting, because I think it's, it's a concern that Mark raised, and I very much disagree with it. And it seems like they're Google is basing their argument against realms on this concern. Uh, if you have another meeting, can we find another time to discuss it? Uh, we can. Uh, can we find another time with offline conversation? I don't know how I'm supposed to reach you offline. Oh, um, let me uh, type my email address into the chat here. Everybody is, should feel free to contact me at either of these. Let me give my can I be okay? I have your email address. That's you don't have a chat medium that I could use. Oh, um, uh, are, you, Keybase. are you on Keybase? Uh, no, I could join that though. We are okay. also on Discord if that's something that you use. I really don't want to start using Discord. Okay, yeah, I, I really think that we should not considered timing attacks is it is a thing unless we want to totally prohibit module loading from realms okay because right. the network cache is going to be reused between different requests regardless of what we decided any of these data structures okay i'm actually surprised that uh i was the one who raised the side channel issue because i don't remember having raised this one. Oh, maybe you weren't uh at some point uh dominic said that you raised it but yeah. that's like par for the course for him yeah <laughs> Um, 
Okay, I gotta go. Okay, right. bye. Thank you, everyone.